let's get into a little bit of a, a heavier guy here. Yeah. We, we talked about a, a slight, slightly framed guy, and then let's get into a, to a, a big hev here. <laughs> he's not quite a hev. No, he's not a hev. Josh Adams at 6'2", 225 at a Central Bucks High School in Pennsylvania. <laughs> I know you love those Pennsylvania those guys. Those Pennsylvania guys. <laughs> Every time. Um, so we talked about how the... Uh, the big guys in this draft run like uh, they may or may not be made of glass. Yeah. This guy. A kind way to put it. Kind of complete opposite. Yeah. I think he runs with a purpose here. Uh, Absolutely. He's 6'2", 225, depending on you know who you look at. Yeah, yeah. I also read he was 6'1", 212, and then the very next line was this 6'2", 225 guy, and I was like, well, somewhere between there, maybe yeah. the median. So, I mean, he looks he looks big. He does kind of have the skinny, a little bit of a skinny leg action, it seems. Um, but he runs hard. He ended up 14th in uh, rushing yards with fourteen with uh, 1,430, uh, 12th in yards per attempt at 6.9. At one point, he was averaging like 9.9 yards a carry or something crazy halfway through the season. <laughs> crazy. Um, so Notre Dame had a bad season last year for the first time in, in a while, I think, or pretty bad season. Everyone was calling for, uh, what's his name over there? Brian Kelly's head. Oh, yeah. Um, so they brought in uh, this guy from Memphis who was, I believe, maybe their offensive coordinator or something, Chip Long. Um, so he's an RPO guy. So they added some of that to their offense, but they really stuck to their guns with a lot of Chip or uh, no, yeah, Chip Kelly. Brian <laughs> Kelly's a, a big smash mouth, a lot of, you know, big offensive linemen run downhill, all that kind of stuff. They stuck to their guns. They, they maybe switched up the pace a little bit on some of these big plays and, and would get to the line and, and run a, a play a lot faster. And, and there was still a, you know, a fair amount of RPOs in this offense, but they, they, they ran smash mouth, punch you in the face offense with two awesome offensive linemen who could potentially be first rounders in, I'm probably going to pronounce these. Do you know how to pronounce these guys' names? Mm, go for so it. So Quentin Nelson <laughs> and Mike Mc, McGlinchy McGlinchy yeah I, I'm not sure McGlinchy so th those two guys are, are absolute studs so this is a good line and then they have an assortment of solid blocking tight ends and then they had a, a quarterback in Wimbush who is well equipped to kind of run this system where they're running a lot a lot of unbalanced lines a lot of you know they, they basically run kind of a based out of a gap scheme running style offense um, and Josh Adams you know really excelled at parts this year and just the crazy thing is, like, I don't even think you saw the best Josh Adams. He was super banged up most of the season. Yeah. I don't even know where to start with all that. That was, that was Josh Adams in a nutshell there. Uh, he, he definitely dealt with a lot of injuries this year, um, which makes what he did even more impressive because um, he definitely – he's got that uh, – that one cut run downhill kind of style that yeah. plays into very well, like what, what you were saying that team wanted to do. Um, and I love the physicality that he runs with and the stiff arms and balance doesn't seem to be a concern. He's definitely converting any kind of third and fourth and short situation. Yeah. You saw a couple times where he didn't pick up the third and short and they gave it to him again on fourth. Right. And he picks it up by a couple yards. Yep. And, but then also on a fair amount of runs, he's kind of got you on the edge of your seat. Cause it feels like he he's about to break one. And if he yeah. gets going, and I don't, can't really catch him. I don't think, again, I don't think you saw the full uh, gambit of what his long speed can be. Right. When you when you look back at the Heisman or the uh, his freshman kind of tape, you there's the long speed looks a little bit better. You can't not only the long speed, but the short area quickness and agility is, right. looks even better. I mean, like freshman uh, Josh Adams, that that highlight tape might look better than any of these dudes we're talking about today. Like, yeah. Looks looks great. Um, <clears throat> just let you know, like give double you throat the, clears. Give you the energy, <laughs> energy injury stuff that he dealt with this year. He battled an ankle injury early on in the season, missed the second half of the Michigan State game, which is week four with uh, ankle stiffness. Next week against my, Miami of Ohio, he tweaked his knee in the first quarter. Didn't play any more of that game, but he still had uh, 159 yards, two touchdowns on eight carries. Um, he suffered from some seasonal allergies and dehydration uh we can somebody get this man some allegra and some water and some uh, and some water please yeah week six versus north carolina and then and then he suffered a concussion the following week versus wake forest or maybe that was two weeks later um he returned the following week versus miami but then left in the third quarter due to an undisclosed injury which i think was just a, more of the concussion symptoms he said he wasn't getting good sleep and was had a lot of tests and was having trouble concentrating and like getting headaches and then it got into the football game was playing real football and then that led to 
some more headaches. So, I mean, he de- that's that was weeks four through eight or something, where it's just one thing on top of another, and you know, the firm yeah. still put up those numbers. That I mean, coming into saw. November, he was a Heisman dark horse kind of. He was just absolutely right. crushing again, right. averaging a stupid number of. Uh, yards per attempt right so there was a time when i was looking at you know it was like 17 tape and i was thinking he was getting a little bogged down and didn't have that kind of quickness or anything not that he needs it he's 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 not he's a no-nonsense runner he doesn't dance it's a very deliberate he's deliberate with what he wants to do right um and he can pop him off um but i think the footwork is is pretty solid i don't you know it's not a lot of wasted movement yeah um, well, i think I don't think he his lateral quickness and change of direction, he has to throttle down a little bit, it looks like. But again, like you said, I, I'm in the camp of I'm a, kind of okay with that because he is a no-nonsense runner. He stays north and south. He's kind of smash you in the mouth and stop me if you can. Now, obviously, he had a really good offensive line. So that you can, Sick offensive line. You can line. knock him for that. But, we, you know, we gave on Johnson some love last week, and there was parts of the year where they, Auburn was considered a top five offensive line. Um yeah, and, and I mean, and he still have to go out there, and he just crushed yards with that awesome right. offensive line. Um, and, is, and and there was a, there, I mean, when you're watching the tape, you see some awesome blocks being thrown around him. But Pro Football Focus still charted him with averaging five point eight nine yards after mother effing contact. Like that's an impressive stat. After contact, you're getting almost six yards. Right. That's crazy. I can't find stats like that on most guys. Yeah, I don't know. Where, I reason. wish I could get them on the other guys, but sometimes they give you these randomnesses if you find them. And that's that's fantastic. And just you know, as as we've been talking about, you know, last week we talked about Penny and um, Royce Freeman, who are kind of bigger backs and and. Don't necessarily won't always bang it. Won't, won't, aren't really bangers. And then when you watch this guy, the, the reason that I'm that I'm really intrigued and into this guy is because yeah, there is times where there's good holes blocked and he knows how to get through those and he'll bust it off for you. But there's times where he's just banging it up the field and it just he looks like his style will immediately transfer to an NFL playing field. You know, a lot smoother, smoothly, smooth, smoother, more uh, smooth, more smoothly <laughs> um, than a lot of these other guys. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of into it. He might not have the lateral quickness as some of these other guys, but I, I think the, the might not need it as much smash mouth pl- and couple that with that. I do think he has pretty decent long speed and maybe you didn't even quite see that. This is a guy his junior year in high school who had a devastating knee injury. Yeah. And, and maybe, ba- so then maybe that's starting to become like a, Basically, trend here. Maybe that's a uh, knock that we gotta kinda get to consider is that there are a lot of scholarships dropped off or Notre Dame didn't drop off and, right. and he went there and then his freshman year we were just talking about how good he looked and you know got a little banged up through this year, but he he mostly played through, Plays through just it. about all that and he played well through just about all that and probably not even at the at the peak potential that you could have seen him. Right. Um so some room for growth I'm, even. I'm pretty into uh into what's going on they again they do run some run pass option kind of stuff and the times where the quarterback did take off he's always downfield blocking yep he's always got a solid block he's not um, the best downfield blocker but he's pretty decent around the line of yeah, scrimmage which is what's most important definitely not bad you you did see in 16 there's a lot more catches on film hands are mediocre um yeah. they're not great but they're not absolutely terrible this year for whatever reason you didn't see a ton of catches most of them coming in one game Week two versus georgia yeah like had six, six had 13 thir- yep. on the on the season um jinx so, stat re- re- regurgitation so not not the greatest of uh 41 total catching, catches though it's not the worst number he i I don't think that this is going to like he's not he's not being a guy that you're going to bring into your team thinking like, oh, we're going to we're going to throw it, check it down to Josh Adams a lot. I'd like to see him run the gauntlet at the combine. Yeah. Which we can't know anything until we get to the combine. Obviously. (laughs) Um, So that's kind of where I stand on Josh uh, Adams. I I think he's like a solid swing at a at a. At complete a, back, like I, a I big think back. So, I think so too. He was he's one of the, again one of these bigger guys that is actually banging out there mm-hmm. and will will carry guys and run through arm tackles and break it, away and, and pop put his off. head down when there isn't anything to really be gained and and get you three, get you four, and sometimes he pops those off. Like he's just he looks the part, and that's I mean that's yeah. not always exactly what you're looking for, but that's one of the things in my mind when I'm looking at running backs. Like, does he look like? When you go to the NFL, he looks like an NFL running back playing in college, and some mm-hmm. of these guys just look like really good college athletes playing in college. Right. If it's that makes sense. Great point. Yeah. No, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'll take yeah. some I'll take some Josh Adams. Yeah, I mean, 
we'll see where we got them ranked at the end of this show, or, or maybe we we disagree a little bit, but that, that's the uh, that's the fun of this whole process. 